16 gigabytes of VRAM for under $350. Uh, supposedly, we'll have to see what really happens more on that in a bit. And let's pretend this one doesn't exist because I think it shouldn't. AMD has said they're gonna focus on this one. Uh, uh, the, whatever, don't buy the gigabyte one. <laughs> anyway, they're saying June 5th availability. As far as I know, there should be a review program, so expect my launch review. If I don't get a sample, I'll buy it when it launches and get, get reviews out shortly afterwards. Uh, they're claiming 15% better uh, performance per dollar than the 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte, but 6% better performance overall. Uh, again, performance per dollar is the calculation on MSRP, where the 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte is 379 MSRP, and this is claiming a $349 MSRP. The biggest question mark here is, will that price be real? Again, more on that in a second. This is AMD's first party performance claims, uh, so always take that with a massive grain of salt. That being said, uh, their 9070 class performance claims uh, weren't really too far off from what reviewers ended up seeing, but AMD in the past for other products has had some slides that did not live up to uh, uh, what reviewers actually saw. So always take this with a grain of salt. If you take it uh, the 6% faster, uh, you know, at face value, you do have to be a little bit careful though, because while I think it's completely fair to compare against the 8 gigabyte 5060 Ti, because of the price parity, and in fact, if you believe MSRPs, AMD's card is actually less expensive. And, and that's the way I do most of my GPU buying recommendations is people have a set budget. So if you're like 350, I have to stay under 400, then the 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti is just off the table. So if you're buying AMD versus Nvidia at this price class, these are the cards to compare. Uh, which one do you get? Um, anyway, so I, I think this is a fair comparison, but how much of this 6% faster is coming from the increased VRAM capacity versus raw performance? Meaning, uh, is this generally, right, if, if they're not, you know, if, if you tune the eight gigabyte card down to settings that work within its VRAM buffer, is it still 6% faster? I would guess not, because I'd imagine at least some of these 40 games that they're saying they tested um, are spilling over that, that VRAM capacity, especially if we're talking the 1440p ultra ray tracing stuff that often goes over eight gigabytes of VRAM. Um, that being said, uh, I believe uh, Hardware Unboxed coverage, uh, I was trying to skim through other people's coverage on this to see if they saw any details or had any private info from AMD because I'm not at Computex and some other people are. Uh, they said they did have a meeting with AMD and asked about the 16 gigabyte uh, version of the 5060 Ti. And I think they got something along the lines of it would be on parity. So maybe it would reduce from 6% faster to about the same, but does about the same mean a few percent slower? It's hard to say. Uh, that being said, if you pop over to something like Tech Power Up's relative performance chart, you take their 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte and move ahead by about five or six percent, uh, that puts you right in line with cards like the 6750 XT or 7700 XT, uh, these types of products it looks like. So uh, there's that. Um, now, anyway, uh, we'll have to see how any of that performance uh, pans out in the long run. Now, AMD has had cards with more VRAM for, you know, $330 to $350 in the past. Uh, cards like the 6700 XT with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, things like that. Uh, the 7700 XT, although that came out with like a 450 MSRP, it did drop to more like 400 and occasionally a little bit below. 16 gigabytes in this price point um, is really aggressive. Again, if they can actually hit that, hit that price, and um, the other thing though that I'm really excited about is with the 90 series, there's less reason, there's still reason, but less reason to get super hung up on the AMD feature set disadvantages. Uh, because I'll be honest, DLSS is a really major selling point for NVIDIA. And I'm not talking about frame generation, that's nice, it's a nice to have feature, but I'm talking the upscaler. Uh, the DLSS4 upscaler is incredibly impressive. And in the past, when we had like FSR2 up against DLSS3, DLSS upscaling was a major, major uh, advantage. Uh, you could get a lot of performance for a very minor hit to image quality. AMD could give you similar performance games, but generally have a pretty noticeable hit to image quality. It was uh, more of a last resort for me to gain performance with FSR versus turning down graphic settings. Whereas with DLSS, I would often just kick it onto at least the quality setting almost by default, because the performance gain was almost always worth uh, the um, image quality trade-off. Uh, whereas with FSR4, 
it's kind of between DLSS 3 and DLSS 4 image quality, which means it's extremely usable. It is extremely usable. It's, it's, it's back to that, like, we might as well at least kick on the quality setting because you're going to get a lot more performance and, and uh, it's going to look extremely close to negative. You're not going to find it too, too noticeable. Uh, you're not going to really complain about the image that you're getting. The big disadvantage for FSR 4 uh, I mean, it's some minor image quality issues versus DLSS 4, but again, it's very usable. That's the main thing it needed to be, is very usable. Uh, the main problem now, I would say, is the game support list, which is why I'm also excited that they're announcing over 60 game titles supported by June 5th, which is the launch date for these cards. For one thing, though, we still have to see that happen, because it's definitely not 60 games yet, so we need to see this actually take place. But even if they hit this, uh, it is still way below the DLSS 4 support list. So there's still going to be a little bit of that caveat on, um, you know, I, I think NVIDIA can, like, like if all other things are equal, if you have two cards at the same price with the same amount of VRAM, uh, roughly the same overall performance, uh, you would still make sense to buy the NVIDIA one if, if all other things were equal, price included. Um, because they do have a slight advantage on the on the image quality uh, with the uh, upscaler and have wider support for it, uh, addition to some other things. Um, but anyway, this is a major ramp up in game support, and it's good to see. So if they continue that trend, what I really want to see is most new games that launch just launch with FSR 4 support, uh, as well as starting to get it back into most of the recent game releases. Super old games, I don't care too much about because it's like uh, they'll probably perform well anyway if the game's old enough, might not need the, the upscaling. The other place where AMD has a um, bit of a disadvantage is frame generation. Uh, where NVIDIA has the times four mode support, uh, whereas AMD is in the times two mode. I'm not too hung up on that, and AMD is talking about a new machine learning model for temporal and spatial awareness to generate frames, increasing accessibility to smoother gameplay. We'll have to see how this plays out. I didn't have major issues with the image quality of AMD's frame generation previously, although if this does offer improvements, that'll be good. Um, and I don't have too much of a hang up on not having a times four mode. Maybe they'll surprise us and, and implement one. Uh, because for me, frame generation is at its best when you're already at around a 60 FPS baseline. So the game already feels pretty responsive and then it just smooths out the, ref the, the motion fluidity on like a 120 Hertz display. Times two mode already does that pretty well. Um, times four mode could help if you're on like a super high refresh rate display, like uh, 240 hertz display, that kind of thing. I just accidentally kicked on a light. If you're like, why does his face just light up for a second? Anyway, ray tracing, ha! Ah! Anyway, maybe we'll leave the light on. Uh, anyway, uh, the point is, uh, totally lost my train of thought. Times four mode is like, if you have a 240 hertz display mode, times four mode helps 60 go to over 200. Pretty cool, helps the motion fluidity. But I think a lot of people are still on like, especially if you're buying a $350 GPU, I think a lot of people might still be on like 120 hertz, 144 hertz display where uh, times two mode already gets you all the motion fluidity your monitor can offer. Uh, so uh, if you're coming from a decent base frame rate. Anyway, um, other things I'd like to see is more integration of AMD's anti-lag technologies, because that's a place it, where in latency they're at a bit of advantage. And then the other thing is in uh, path tracing performance. Their ray tracing performance has improved a lot with the 90 series, um, but they're still super behind in path tracing modes. But path tracing modes have generally uh, been very NVIDIA focused implementations. You get the feeling that they're kind of uh, helping with the engineering uh, behind, uh, you know, uh, for, for game developers wanting to implement those modes, things like that. So there's probably very little thought or effort put into making sure it runs well on AMD hardware, right? Uh, so with that being said, it's looking like AMD is trying to offer a ray reconstruction competitor and is calling it ray regeneration. Now, we have yet to see if image quality wise this can match up to ray reconstruction. With the move to the transformer model for ray reconstruction with their DLSS 4 updates, um, uh, testing in things like Cyberpunk, there was a huge improvement to the ray reconstruction algorithm. It made it very, very good. It helped the image quality of the path tracing mode significantly. So it's, uh, I, again, I, I'll, I'll have to see it to believe it for AMD's ray regeneration to compete with that. But AMD surprised me with FSR 4. I was hoping it would be almost as good as DLSS 3, and in reality, it ended up at least as good, if not better, most reviews, including my own, putting it kind of between DLSS 3 and DLSS 4 in image quality. 
So if a uh, ray reconstruction uh, a competitor, ray regeneration can maybe surprise us, could help out their path tracing performance because that's what they're talking about here uh, because they're talking about how path tracing, um, to do it in real time, you just can't send out a lot of rays. So you have to rebuild the image out of uh, not a lot of information. One thing you can do is neural radiance caching, which helps. Uh, learns how light bounces in a scene to predict and store indirect lighting. Uh, and then again, you get your in your uh, uh, ray reconstruction style uh, AI denoiser to really rebuild the image. I, I really hope this turns out well. Again, I'll have to see it actually in action to totally believe it, but uh, hopefully it does because that AMD did a lot to close the... Um, ray tracing performance gap in lighter ray tracing workloads with their 90s, 70s cards. We'll have to see how the 90s, 60s do. Um, but uh, again, in these heaviest workloads where you need things like ray reconstruction, etc., they were lagging behind. Hopefully this uh, helps out. You get the feeling, uh, and, and it's even announced, that they're working with Sony uh, because it's very clear that Sony with their, with their uh, next PlayStation wants to go all in on uh, neural technologies, neural rendering technologies, ray tracing technologies uh, for the PlayStation 6. And AMD being their, their partner on that, that we have, they have Project Amethyst. So uh, this is very much, I think, a priority for AMD and Sony. And I think there's a lot of work together to make stuff like this work on AMD hardware. Again, FSR 4, I think was a product of that collaboration and came out really well. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic on this. Um, but we'll see, have to see how it goes. I think that's most of the stuff. Uh, I mean, we don't have a release date exactly on that. They're saying like second half of 2025. So we'll have to see what happens. Anyway, like I said, the big thing about all of this though is, is, is this a fake MSRP? If the $350 is a fake MSRP, then this is just gonna end up really disappointing. Uh, if we look on the market right now, at least in the United States, I understand that worldwide, this might be a little bit better. But if I try to buy a 9070 right now, which is meant to be a $550 MSRP, uh, there's one $600 one listed, which is already 50 above the MSRP and it's out of stock. Uh, I'd have to go up to $700 to actually find a model that is in stock. If I want the XT version, uh, the uh, looks like I have to go up to um, $740 uh, for one in stock, and most of them are over $800. Usually these ones that are a little over $700 uh, also sell out fairly, fairly quickly, which I guess is a good sign for people wanting to buy AMD uh, hardware this time around. Um, considering the uh, 5070 Ti isn't too much more than that. I mean, if you get a $100 gap, maybe it makes sense. But again, in general, the 5070 Ti, I, I think, is the stronger uh, card there. So uh, if AMD starts to encroach too far towards that price, it just makes sense to buy that one. Because again, same VRAM capacity, similar rasterized performance, uh, you know, but better ray tracing performance, more, you know, DLSS 4 support and broader variety of games, all of that, right? So that's the issue that could end up happening uh, with this 9060 XT. If the 16 gigabyte model is really available right around $350, I think this is an exciting, uh, could be, you know, I gotta, gotta test it out, but could be on paper an exciting product uh, for people looking for an affordable card with enough VRAM and forward looking feature set uh, to be set as, as you go into the next, uh, you know, uh, a uh, few years as you get into the next console generation, you don't wanna be left super far behind, all of that. Uh, if this starts to push into the price range of the 50, uh, 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, which uh, again, I know United States pricing I think is worse right now than most of the world, um, but the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte looks like if I wanted to buy one that's actually in stock right now, I'd be at about $473, but I've heard that worldwide pricing has been a bit better than that. So in other words, if this starts pushing toward over towards its, like over the $400 line, uh, then it's getting close enough to this that you might be like, if they have the same performance and same VRAM, uh, NVIDIA has the feature set, right? So I think AMD just needs to be careful with that. If, if this stays close to the $350 mark, uh, this could be a winner. Um, there's a lot of people upset with NVIDIA right now, and the 50 series in general seems to have had more issues than people are used to seeing uh, with NVIDIA launches, with... Uh, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, the point is, 
I think there's a lot of people hungry for a card with enough VRAM uh, for not too much over $300, and um, uh, this could be it. I'm excited to review it. I'm hoping it doesn't disappoint. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.